guys, I am Chris Kaler and I'm Amber Phantom Kitchen and today we are back again guys with Finland Saga episode 11 for season. Last episode, uh, we talked with Askeladd about how everything has a beginning and an end. Mm -hmm. uh, when you become strong, eventually someone will defeat you and they'll become strong and the cycle goes on and on and on. We kind of uh, compare that to how Thorkin's father, Thorfinn's father died after, you know, after fighting Askeladd and maybe Thorfinn could think about this as it's inevitable, everyone dies eventually, doesn't mean that you should spend your entire life focused on the death of someone, okay, when you can focus on their life and what they mm -hmm. did when they were alive. But uh, yeah, yeah, that speech about uh, the inevitable end also led Askeladd to choose to fight back against Thorkel. The main army retreated back home, back north, and uh, Thorkel, when he found out that Canute, the prince, mm -hmm. was right there, he chose to attack. Took, he uh, took 500 men, captured him, captured Canute, and then he started moving against the main army. They were asked, Askeladd's group, they were asked to help, but Askeladd mm -hmm. chose to just make it count. They're not ready to die and uh, to fade with the twilight. So he said, we have a hundred men, let's fight those 500 men and Thorkel. Mm -hmm. And if we die, we die going out with a bang. <laughs> so we have, a huge, <laughs> we have a huge challenge ahead of us. So let's jump in this episode and see if it happens now. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these episodes and check out our Patreon for the full length reactions. All right, let's go. Straight up, straight up. Survival of the fate is jacking, you keep your show. It is the world that our wisdom will lead, but tell me what went wrong. I've sold my soul, so tell me what is left for me when I've given up everything. Scream, 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 scream. I will not try to do that with the mic. Yeah, don't do the Bad scream. Idea. Don't do the scream part. Are you okay? <laughs> it is winter. It's Are going you having an epiphany? キリスト教徒回収しようかな。キリスト教はあれそんなこれそんなってうるせえもん。ロンドンであいつらが拝んでる木造を見たけどよ。すんげえよはそうじゃねえ。You mean Jesus? He is strong in his vulnerability. あんなんトールシンのハンマーで1コロだよ。They don't value the same things. 水の上歩いたり、パンを増やしたり。and changing water into wine. Now that you would like. <laughs> they do have the prince. He's suffering his punishment. Punishment, yeah, in, in silence. Like Jesus. It all comes down to this. <笑>あの、<笑><笑> There's no better glory than die, dying as a warrior on a battlefield. Like, even when they die, they, they win. いかに戦い、いかに死ぬか、敵は強ければ強いほどいい。that's what he likes. 
スベン王のこともクヌート王子のことも意味深なあ見えるあなたかもですねここにおりますシンプルお酒をくれ早くお示しくださいトミニコンダウンキリスト教とも大変だな神父よイエスと俺たちの神どっちが偉いかね酒を作った方おまけをえいいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおい、分かってます。今すぐ殿下とラグナル様を解放せい。They don't give a shit about the priest. 様に選択の権利はないんだ。But then they can also attack you and take them back. It's a, it's a trap, guys. It's a trap. そうじゃねえか。ラグナルの部下よ。クヌート殿下。もはや遠慮は無用だろう。Attack me. Let's go. He doesn't care about the ostages, he just wants them to pay attention. Yeah! You said you had 2,000 men, let's go! He's goading them. Yeah, they don't have an hostage anymore. What do you say? You see, they're all going to die. They're all going to die. Yeah. She knows which buttons to push. I mean, they're Vikings, so. Whether or not they converted, this is still their heritage. This is how they were raised. They literally have a plan. That's gonna be good. Release the child. Oh, God damn. Uh, he's cutting trees! <laughs> They'll just recapture you. Oh. Boring! <laughs> Do you sense the main characters? <laughs> Strand. The fumes of whatever they have in the barrel. Charcoal? You are surrounded by leaf, so be careful. Oh, are they gonna Sumiyaki? set fire to everything? Yeah. Okay. It, they are upwind, so they get to send the fumes and the the smoke to them. <laughs> If you don't have the strand or the man, you have, need to have the wind. I'm just right here, dude. That's the plan, I think. Mm -hmm. And to go where they want you to go, that would work too. We're the opponent. <laughs> I kinda wanna see Askeladd versus Thorkel. That'd be something. So they'll go away. He'd scare the fire away. <laughs> Release the child! <laughs> it really it's a tactic in this group. Oh, man. 
that I don't mean, just bring back his head, though, bring back all the prints. I, I don't know, but I guess like the plan, I expected them to literally try to fight, because I mean, that would be crazy enough to do that. But they don't have the men, so just try to capture Canoe. <laughs> Yes, but at the same time, he's seen him grow. Despite saying otherwise during their duel, he is strong. We're coming! Yeah, but you're just pinpoint your position right now. Yeah. Thank you for getting us! Yeah, you do that. There is no winning in war, man. <laughs> Fuck, like a dumbass on fire. It looks fucking intense. You can try. Fuck he looks like a main character. <laughs> oh. Smooth. Terror, yeah, a la roadhouse. <laughs> save is a big word, depends on who they sell you to. My prince charming. Hey! We don't have time to waste, there's fire everywhere. He's just so proud. <laughs> Great memories. Yep. For dad? Did he ever talk about me? Yep. Yeah. No. You know your father and mother. Because with the, how many Thors there are, it could be anyone. <laughs> yeah. They all know him. <laughs> that was the best man at his wedding. <laughs> it's a shock too to meet someone who knew his dad. See you later. <laughs> Please, I want them to talk. It's gonna be a chase. I like Thorkel. Yeah. I like his uh, personality. He's making it a game, which I mean, I mean, it's it's his way of doing things. Not everyone likes that, but it's entertaining. No. There's a reason why he trusts him. Ooh. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah, but exactly. My god, the prince is beautiful! <laughs> Unless it's the princess. <laughs> or he just has feminine features, which is possible. Kanut is a man, so... <laughs> I think they're just surprised because of his features, which could be why he's constantly wearing a helmet. Because it looked like a fair maiden? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. That's gonna be I for mean, next episode. Earlier, I was kind of joking when you saw uh, Thorfinn on his horse riding to save the prince. My the damsel hero. in distress. My hero. 
Looks like academia. It. <laughs> uh, no, but we'll see. I guess he's going to be around. Um, it's going to be interesting considering Canute's way of seeing things. The fact that he's not participating. He's not like talking back. He's not saying much. They, uh, they are saying they are allies. They knelt to him. So maybe he's going to be more open with them. I think there's also a reason why the prince never talk or speak in front of other people that it wasn't a lie. With. I'm gonna assume it's a man until next episode when I'm we get more answers. I'm gonna assume it's a woman. Canute is a man. So in this show, maybe it's different or maybe it's not Canute, but the way they all talk to him, the, the way they knelt to him, like the way Ragnar speaks to him, I expect him to be Canute, the heir, when well, the second prince, so I don't know. Uh, I don't see why they would lie about that or why they would send to the battlefield a woman when they just want him to kill Unless himself. Unless if he has a wife or a sister, maybe she took his place to protect him. We don't know. But I'm guessing maybe That'd a woman. That would be worse. I don't know. Maybe a woman. I don't know. We'll see. We'll anyway. See. Um, but yeah, his way of thinking being so different from, from what Thorfinn is used to with the, the men around them, the ones that you know fight each other for the simplest re of reasons, that is going to be a big change. I kind of hope that they speak to each other and they stay close. Uh, at least maybe give him an ally in this group, like someone that he doesn't feel a deep hatred for. That'd be interesting to have him have a companion, maybe, to talk to. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. Uh, but yeah, I expected, almost from the speech last episode, I expected Ascalad to be like, fuck it, we're fighting them. Makes more sense that uh, he would just aim for capturing Canute. Because, uh, like, they did only have a hundred men. Uh, I, the way I talked about it last episode, it was about the reputation. I guess you don't necessarily have to defeat Thorkel, kill Thorkel and his group, to get the, the rewards of what you did. They, they saved Canute. They mm -hmm. are going to bring him back. There's also going to be a chase. Like, Thorkel is not going to just let them go. They're all going towards the same place anyway, so... Kingsman. What? King's Venus. They're going towards the main army. Yeah. So, you are... I mean, they said it, you get the you get the rewards if you get to escape me long enough. So, <laughs> he's going to actively try to get them. So, that's going to be interesting in the future. I do want Thorfinn to talk to Thorkel, if only a little bit about his father. Get a new perspective on who his dad used to be. Uh, that's going to be interesting. I don't think... The way Thorkel speaks to Thorfinn... I don't think fighting him is no longer a possibility. He sees a chance that like he said, oh, you're definitely Thor's son because you're, you're strong, so you're, you're his son. Mm -hmm. Just like I, I talked about Askeladd last episode, I feel like for Thorkel, this would be a, re a good enough reason to fight Thorfinn. Like, prove to me that you are your father's son, that you have what it takes because you probably inherited that from him. If he's that strong, yeah. I can't wait to see how strong you are. But that's going to make him a target too. How badass was he in this episode of riding a fiery <laughs> horse? Yeah. Askeladd does trust him. Like, despite what he says, which I do believe that there's a part of it that's true. Like, he knows that Thorfinn is going to put himself in danger. He knows he's going to do those, those jobs for him because of what he aims to gain from it. He also would not send him constantly on those missions if he did not trust that he could do it especially if it's something that as important as go get the fucking prince i think he's seen him like he dismissed mm -hmm. him when he faced him a few episodes ago but i think he truly values his strength he sees the potential he knows he's capable so that's why he also sends him constantly fighting those stronger opponents if only to see how what you're what he's willing to do and how strong he'll come out of those fights. Like I mean, he lost against Thorkel doesn't mean he's not learning from that fight. It has been a decade that Thorfinn John Aska and his man say so yeah, he grew he grew up yeah, with yeah. them, he learned with them. So And he's fought Askelad more times than we mm -hmm. saw in the show. So even if yes, Askelad may seem Thorfinn as a means to an end to do what he wants to do. Because he knows that he's gonna do it without asking question because he wants to have a, uh, any possible shot to fight him. I think a good there, reason, there is some sort of fondness behind it. 
a right. good reason to trust Thorfinn comes down to his motivation to come back alive because of his drive, because mm -hmm. of his purpose, is that strong. So he knows he's going to get the job done. Out of everyone, he's the most motivated to come back alive, mm -hmm. to prove himself to get those fights. So he knows he can trust him. He knows he's going to do the job. So I guess it's Askeladd's way of acknowledging Thorfinn's strength, but also using him because he knows how strong he's getting and creating this warrior that might defeat him one day. But yeah. Thorkel is a fucking menace, though. <laughs> Despite the conditions, he's just having a nice little chat, surrounded by fire, doesn't give a shit, he's fighting like, Oi! Oi! We're right here! We'll see you again! <laughs> he does, like, he enjoys this. He took an hostage only for the enemy to pay attention to him. <laughs> he wants to fight! At the end of the day, like he explained why Vikings are like that, like the the what they believe in. Mm. We talked about this last episode, but really how they live, how they go out as warriors, like that's all that matters to them. Like they need to add pile on the the glory, the the deeds and the just the, the victories mm -hmm. and make themselves these worthy. strong warriors worthy of Valhalla so that mm. when they die they get to have the ultimate fantasy, the, the, the just get to the halls. And mm -hmm. this is what they were raised on. And when you compare that to Christianity, it is very difficult to see a similarity, but because, I mean, they don't value the same thing. Like uh, a true, like, I guess if you think about how I said it with, with Canute, like him saying, staying silent and mm -hmm. taking on the, the insults and the mockeries and all of that, it is, it would be the representation of what a Christian would see as strong. So basically you are the martyr. You suffer those, those blows, but you take them without complaining. You suffer through life. Like the life of a Christian is a life of suffering that gets rewarded the in the end. So whereas the life of a Viking is you live your life to the fullest so that I, I, acknowledge you in the end so it's just they all have this fantasy of this this dream of a heaven of a, a reward in the end it's just how they achieve that is different but where one values fighting and the other values not necessarily suffering but they value those that are strong enough to take on that suffering mm -hmm. it still comes down to strength it comes down to, I guess one is physical strength and the other is mental strength. It's just not seen in the same way. So I guess, I mean, that's why I, you say it's because he has a girl voice and a kid's a girl. Maybe. Would you really risk the prince's, the prince's life on the battlefield? The king was fly? there. The king left. <laughs> the king was there. Anyway. You but are the heir to the, well, not even, he's the second son. Maybe that is in Kedut. Maybe. But then everyone else thinks it is. Or if, or if it is, he has a really pretty face. There are many possibilities here. We'll see next episode. But uh, yeah, that's how I interpreted the silence. Kind of like Jesus, kind of like the Christ. He would face those obstacles by taking them on, not complaining, not mm. giving them anything. Just silent suffering, silent... Um, Resiliation. Resilience. Mm. And because, I mean, that's... You don't fight back. You turn the other cheek. That's another thing that's being told and, and taught with the What's Christians. What's the English word of penitence? Penitence? You sure? I don't know. Anyway, because that's the term that you were looking for earlier. And it's a punishment, but it's not the same thing, basically. No, no. I was looking for punishment. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Uh, but it is, yeah, it's definitely something that's taught. Like, when you receive a blow, you turn the other cheek. Like... Even though Christians have a long history of, of fighting and wars and, and yeah. still at the base of it, most of what's been being taught in the Bible and all of that is meant, at least not necessarily in the Bible, we have not followed Christian you know, teachings in a long time. But the idea of a good Christian is someone who helps others, gives to others, turns the other cheek, you don't fight back, you take on yourself and help others. So 
this is what I see in Canoe or not Canoe. It's not necessarily a weakness. It takes a lot of strength to turn the other cheek. It's just that where the Christians will value this, the Vikings don't value this. The, the Vikings mm -hmm. need to fight back in order to be accepted into Valhalla. No, I mean, and to be fair, I don't believe any of them are right or wrong. Like I said, in Vikings, it all comes down to what type of life appeals to you more. Someone like Thorkel, who enjoys fighting and goes from battlefield to battlefield. Well, it's like the life of a Christian. Exactly. But someone like Knut, or the Knut we saw, who seems to be a pacifist, doesn't want to fight, would rather, you know, pray for peace and all of that. He would not enjoy the life of a Viking. You go with the type of life that talks to you, speaks to you more. Mm. But yeah. Anyway, so this is where we are. Uh, that's pretty much it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode with us. If you want to see the next two episodes right away, they are on Patreon already. You can check them out. The link is in the description below. And if you don't want to the next one, show them on YouTube next week. Yes. So we see more of Prince Kenut or Princess Kenuta. <laughs> so you then Kenuta. I don't know. What's the feminine of Kenuta? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>